Dave, we're here at the FQXI conference in Banff on physics of the observer, physics of what happens. Uh, from the standpoint of consciousness, what can you bring to the thinking of all these quantum physicists? Well, at this conference, I guess physicists are thinking about observers and the role they play in physics. Now, what is an observer? I think an observer is someone who makes an observation, who perceives the world. And what is that? I think that's an act of consciousness. An observer is almost by definition a conscious being who consciously perceives what's going on in the world. So it's kind of, it's hard to begin to talk about observers without talking about consciousness, which I guess is, is my field. Um, you know, maybe you can find a notion of observation so that anything that affects one other thing, then the other thing is making an observation. One particle affects another. That particle is an observer in some very limited sense. I get the sense that when these physicists are talking about observers, they're talking about something a lot more robust than that. They're talking about something like us, when we perceive the world and experience what's going on, and that's a kind of act of consciousness. So one of the attacks against the uh, importance of consciousness in quantum physics is that quantum physics was going on for a lot longer time than conscious observers, certainly like sentient creatures like human beings or any animals or any life was, was happening. The universe is at 13.8 billion years and how, how long has there been sentient life? A few billion years at the absolute most if you give sentience to uh, you know, primal uh, single, single cell animals. So what, what is the nature of consciousness that could, it, it could affect quantum physics before there were sentient creatures? Well, I think this brings out there's a number of different possible roles for observers in physics. One role is just epistemological in the sense that, that observers play a role in our finding out about the dynamics of physics. For example, the very fact that we are here as conscious observing beings tells us something about the universe, which puts some constraints on the physics of the world. Now, for that to be true, consciousness or observation needn't be playing a fundamental role in the physics. Rather, consciousness and observation is giving us access to the physics. And that's a less controversial role for observers. But, but that's un uh, uh, uncontroversial, I, I, I think. I think everybody would accept that. Uh, but, but some people would have consciousness playing a very fundamental role that it wouldn't exist without the conscious process. So that's the more radical thesis <laughs> of roles for observation does observation or consciousness actually play a role in the dynamics of physics? And for the most part, it looks like it doesn't. But there is this one place where it looks like, hey, it might. And that's quantum mechanics. We're in the traditional formulations of quantum mechanics. It says there's this wave function and it evolves. And every now and then there's a measurement or there's, there's an observation. And when that happens, something changes. The wave function collapses into a new state. And suddenly it looks like observation if you take all this as, at face value, observation, consciousness, is playing a role in the dynamics. And for a lot of people, that's hard to stomach, and they've tried to find ways out. You mentioned a, a problem. Wasn't, didn't all this pre-exist consciousness? Didn't physics, wasn't the wave function evolving for a long time before consciousness ever came along? Well, I suppose one view is that, yeah, well, for, for all those you know, billions of years or whatever, the wave function was just evolving without collapsing, and suddenly in one branch, the first conscious observer came along and then collapsed the wave function into a definite state for the very first time. Now that's a radical that's, view. Yeah. But on this view, this is a view where consciousness actually plays a role in creating determinate reality. How can any of this articulate with what you've proposed uh, quite seriously in terms of panpsychism, that there is some proto-consciousness indeed as a fundamental factor in everything that exists. Could there be some correlation? In my own mind, actually, I mean, I'm very sympathetic with the idea that consciousness has to be taken somehow as fundamental and irreducible, but there's two different ways that could go. There's the dualist way, where you have physics and you have consciousness as two separate things. And there's the panpsychist idea, where consciousness underlies all of physics and is present at the most fundamental level of every physical process. And for me, those are two different ideas. So when I think about consciousness collapsing the wave function, as in quantum mechanics, that's with the dualist half of my head. You've got physics, you've got a wave function, and you've got consciousness, which is observing the, the wave function. And somehow consciousness is something distinct 
from the physical wave function and every now and then affecting it in this interesting phenomenon of collapse. In a way, that I think of that as an updated version of René Descartes, who said <laughs> there's mind and there's body, they're separate and they interact. There's also a panpsychist idea that says consciousness is everywhere underneath physical and the physical world is itself mental at the base. But I think these two ideas, you could try to combine these two ideas, but I don't think they'd combine all that well. If consciousness is everywhere, and consciousness collapses the wave function, mm. then the wave function would be, consciously, would be constantly collapsing. And we know that doesn't happen, because you get interference effects and double slit experiments. So I think these two, uh, these two ideas, panpsychism and consciousness collapsing the wave function, should be really, I at least see them as ideas to pursue on separate tracks. With panpsychism, do you have the proto-consciousness being underneath everything and that, and that the physics is derived from it? Or is, is it like a, another force that is equal and equally fundamental to the so-called four forces of gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak forces? Is, 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 what, what's the difference there? The way I think about panpsychism, it's not so much an extra force in physics or an extra bit of the dynamics. Rather, consciousness is kind of, is the underlying nature of the processes that physics is describing mathematically. So when physics gives us a mathematical theory of how all these physical entities relate to each other quantitatively and so on, but it doesn't tell us what these entities are in themselves. Panpsychism offers a hypothesis about what these entities actually are. Intrinsically, they involve consciousness and the relation among all these conscious entities is as described by the physics. So it's not so much that you need to postulate a fifth force here as your kind of panpsych consciousness here is, you know, as Stephen Hawking put it, what put the, puts the fire into the equations. That's the fundamental nature of the reality that physics is describing.